So this little piece here is pretty unremarkable, but it does allow you to do some interesting things, some interesting hacks with your bike. This is a double-sided cable ferrule. This one uh, specifically is by the brand Jaguar. And I got this to sort of solve a problem I was running into in uh, my previous video about running two handlebars on one bike. If you watch that video, you know, everything worked, but there was the issue of having to completely remove uh, the cables via the zip ties and all that stuff. Lots of people recommended using cable splitters and yes, cable splitters would work, but this bike has a full run of continuous housing. So does not work in this situation. And that got me thinking that there has to be a solution to this. And that's when I remembered that these guys exist, the double sided cable ferrule. The way this is going to work is I'm going to actually cut the cable housing right here, kind of near the headset, and then use these double side cable ferrules to reconnect them. Where it gets cool is if you do decide to run a second handlebar, you don't need, you know, all this housing. You don't have to go through and remove all the zip ties. You just literally splice in the short section of housing into the other side of the double sided cable ferrule. I know this seems like a pretty niche application of this, but there are actually other instances when you would want to use something like this. Say for example, you've got a bike with internal cable routing and uh, it's cable too short. You wanna raise those handlebars. Maybe you're switching to a wider handlebar setup and, and you just don't wanna deal with pulling all the cable housing out and re-threading it through. With this, you can kind of nip it off at the bud, set up your new controls, and instead of changing the entire length of housing, just change that shorter segment that's really attached to the handlebar. Another instance where something like this could be handy is if you're swapping out the rear derailleur on your bike. Older rear derailleurs use kind of a long, lazy loop uh, from the frame into the derailleur. Some newer ones, especially the 1X specific ones by SRAM, the housing run is really short and direct. It's actually a pretty significant amount of housing difference. So it would be hard to fudge one length housing to work with both. But with something like this, if you don't have enough housing to run a longer loop, you can use this to splice in that extra loop, vice versa, you know, take it out and run it into that more modern rear derailleur. In my head, this should work pretty easily in theory. Of course, I haven't tried it out yet. Uh, these just came in. Uh, so we're gonna see if my wacky idea works. One thing to know about these guys is uh, they do come in different diameters from four, 4.5 to five. I bought a 10 pack of five thinking that it would probably be better to have the largest one to work with most cable housing diameters. So th there might be a little bit of slop, but you know, if you're super uh, anal about these things, then yes, there are specific sizes to take up that slop. First thing I'm gonna do is uh, pull out the inner steel cable, um, figure out where I wanna cut this and then reattach it with this handlebar setup just to make sure everything is shifting okay. So I'm gonna undo the rear brake first, undoing the rear derailleur. I don't have to mess with the front derailleur on this bike because I've got this funky seat mounted uh, front derailleur here. All right, the cables are free. Front brake out, rear brake out. Rear shifter. I just realized I cut the cables, the big climax without actually filming it. Apologies. Uh, I decided to cut it near the base, near the crown of the, the bike. Uh, that'll accommodate the different cable run of a drop bar. Now time to reattach the housing, slip in the, the, the inner cable, and hopefully it works as planned. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start with the front brake since that's the shortest. Goes on this side over here and on that side like so. You can feel it at the juncture. All right, so we've got one spliced end, reattaching the front brake cable. So the splice has worked, at least on the front. Okay, so this is the first step. The next step now is to really take advantage of these double-ended ferrules, and I'm gonna optimize a second set of handlebars for it, uh, the drop bars that I have somewhere. So let's get that set up. This is where the magic should happen. Um, as I remove this, these short segments should stay on, but I'll still have the ability to splice on different bars with different housing. Uh, so instead of carrying a whole different set of bars with full length housing, this is all you have to contend with. Now let's get weirder and uh, put in the drop bars. All right, so we've got our drop bars here. 
I guess I'll pull out the cables, kind of eyeball where they cut them in, and hopefully they'll splice into the ends we already have here. That should be good. Let's push the brake cable through. One end of the splice and the other end of the splice. And, ooh, that's the housing. Feels good. You can really see what's going on here with a different color. Uh, I thought it would be weird, but I think it actually looks kind of cool now. <laughs> I think I'm going to deal with the shifter cable next. And I believe it's this blue one. It's the shifter. So I like to give it a little slack. Uh, so when I run a bag, there's some kind of, there's some wiggle room there. And big in the hole. New shifter cable. These are the Gevinol shifters here. So super easy to install. Um, they do index. I'm actually just running them uh, friction because that's just how I like things. Threading on one end of the double-ended ferrule, mating it to the other end, tightening down the cable. All right, and because this is friction, it should just work fine. There you go. Access to all the gears, no need to fudge with indexing whatsoever. Perfect. So we've got one last cable and that is the rear brake cable to do. All right, so there we have it. We have swapped uh, drop bars on and instead of having to undo all the clips and the zip ties on the frame, we have a much shorter segment to work with. Basically, if you're gonna use this hack uh, to run multiple handlebars, this is what your second handlebar uh, would look like. So a lot shorter segment of housing. You can reuse the, the inner steel cable, although bring some spares. I do understand that probably fewer people will use this for this specific purpose. Let's look at a more practical use case for something like the double-ended ferrule. Okay, so I think a more practical use of the double-ended ferrule would be on something like this, where you've got a bike here where it's internally routed. Let's say your, your, your cabling and your housing is, you know, done perfectly and really tight. But then all of a sudden you want to try a wider bar. You could just lengthen the housing, you know, just pull everything out, but then you have to deal with weaving everything in. Or you could use it to just snip off some kind of stubby ends here, make your handlebar adjustments or, you know, raising it, whatever. And then the only part you would have to get new housing for would be this shorter terminal end that's attached to the handlebar. So this is definitely a scenario where I think the double-ended ferrule would rule because you can just leave this part in here. Another situation is, again, you've got everything cabled just, you know, to, to the hair's breadth of perfection and you have to put things in a case because you're traveling and you just don't have enough slack to maneuver your handlebar in the case. Once again, another perfect scenario where you could just cut these terminal ends, put those double-ended ferrules and remove the entire handlebar and put that in your case. I alluded to this in the beginning also, but there's some derailers that have a long loop like this. Some are more direct. And let's say you swap your derailers for whatever reason, and you find that your housing is too short. It needs to make that loop and you don't have that much cable. Uh, you could just snip it and then graft on the extra cable with a double-ended ferrule. All right, so hopefully like five people found this video uh, useful. This was actually inspired by a lot of comments asking about if there was a better way to do it with full length housing. And uh, I gave it a think and remembered that these double cabled ferrules existed. And they're actually pretty cool. They solve some kind of unique problems that would be a little bit of a pain in the butt, uh, especially if you have internally routed cables and have to make whatever adjusted. This might not be something that you have to do right away, uh, but it's a good thing to keep in your back pocket whenever you hit that situation when you're like, how do I do this without having to buy like 10 feet of housing? If you appreciate this content, please hit that subscribe button that is completely free or help support the channel by joining us on Patreon. Buy some merch, all the links below, and as always, keep the supple side down.